we're just gonna have a look at how we can use motion graphics with text in Procreate Dreams. For setup, I'm using 4K widescreen. I'm gonna click on the three dots in the corner, uh, 24 frames per second, and just a duration of 10 seconds should be plenty. Good rule of graphics when you're putting any kind of text into a screen. You wanna give them a, um, an ability to read it like three times over. So don't just you know, fly it up there and expect them to read it in that very instant. They might blink. <laughs> Sometimes we blink. All right, so I'm gonna to go to an empty canvas. I'm gonna set my background for this to be black. So if you recall, we go into the time code and it opens up controls for onion skinning and for background color. I'll just kind of move this down to a dark black. So let's get some text in here. That's gonna be the only thing that's the star of our show is text. So we're gonna click on the plus here add text. That gets us into what looks like nothing, right? Like what happened? There's there's so minimal setup of menus and dreams, but we do have a text box here so we can type a word. Our word is going to be what's. And of course, I can't see it because it's defaulting to typing in black. But I'm going to trust that it's there for right now. Select all and we're right over here this is where all the magic is gonna happen, these two little A's. Click on that. Now you open up all of your controls for your typography. We have everything we need here for our, our typefaces and our colors. And then over here, any of the formatting that we wanna control. So we'll talk about some of these specifics of controls in case you are maybe unfamiliar with some of the typography terms. Starting out, we really just wanna get this to be visible, so I'm gonna make my text be white. And I'm gonna choose um, I like Helvetica new, kind of a nice light, thin, thin, yeah, that's good, what's. That's my first word, I'm gonna hit done. I'm gonna copy this track, because I do wanna stick with all the same colors and the same typography. I'm gonna copy this track, I'm gonna paste this track. All right, so now I have another incident of the word what's. I can just change that now. And I can select that and put in your and now I don't really have to deal with reselecting the font family or the color. So we're gonna do the same exact thing, add a new track. Now I'm gonna paste, click on the track, click paste. Again, we just pasted the word what's cause that's what I had copied before. And I'm gonna change this now to be the word dream with a question mark. So we have our three tracks basically of what we're animating. So before we go too far, um, I just want to get into a little lesson about typography. Test. So coming back into the type controls, when we get into formatting text, you want to make sure that your word is all selected if you're doing any formatting. Let's look at formatting for a second. This is where we can um, Use your left or right or center justification, all caps, outline, underline, some basic effects. Over here, this is where things can, sometimes people don't really understand what these things mean in typography, and it's it's really good to know it can be very useful. So, well, size, I think we understand size. This is how we can make things bigger. Kerning, tracking and kerning, really similar, not exactly the same, but let's. I'll show you the difference. So kerning is a lot like tracking, but if you'll notice, what I've done here is I, I'm using the word your, and I've put my cursor right between the Y and the O. And here's, well, I'm gonna, here's why. The spacing here could be just slightly tighter. Now I'm really splitting hairs, I get that. Every now and then you get a couple of letters that their combination just throws the spacing off just a tiny bit. And this is very small, it's very minor. So you can use this for correcting. You can also use it to get creative for logo designs and such. But anyway, I'm gonna go in here and instead of selecting the whole word, I'm just putting my cursor right in between those two characters, going back into my format. And with kerning, when I adjust the kerning here, it's just going to move right where I had my cursor. So I want my Y to be a little tighter in with that O. So I can just drag it down into some negative kerning here and put that wherever I want. And you know, if I was being creative with some kind of logo design, maybe I wanted it to 
be all sticky and weird. And <laughs> now, now it's kind of illegible. But that's the kind of control that you'll get with kerning. So it's character by character, where your tracking is going to be um, not, not the same type of control that you have there. Oh, that's my size. Okay. So again, tracking, if I do the tracking, it's looking at, if I just put my cursor in between two and I adjust my tracking, what's going to happen? Not a thing. Okay. So with tracking, you need to put your cursor over the characters that you want to space out. And with kerning, you're going right into that actual space. So again, they do very similar things. Not exactly the same, but that's what those mean. Last thing we'll go over here for the uh, formatting of text. Let's talk about leading and baseline. So leading is an old fashioned word that comes from when printing presses had literally bars of lead <laughs> placed in between all the little letters that would be set up on a printing plate. And if you put thicker bars of lead in between the lines of your text, then you opened up the spacing between the lines of the text. So in this particular example, we don't have, uh, we don't have multiple lines. Just to manually show you, adjusting your leading would be tightening up the space between the lines of text like we're doing here. So this would be really tight leading. This would be a very open letting if you opened up the space between your, your lines. Now, the last one is going to be baseline. And adjusting your baseline can come in really handy. Not in this case. Let me give you, give you an example of something that you could, you could adjust a baseline on that would be handy. 25th. Sometimes in a case like this, you might want to go in and have the TH be set to something smaller and maybe maybe even raised up. So we'll go into our format. I will adjust the size of the T and the H. So now it's getting tinier. And if I move the baseline, the baseline is simply where the bottom of your text all lands. If you shift a baseline down or up, if I shift it down, it's gonna go under, which would be weird. And up, I can raise it up here. So there we go. So now we've kind of gone through what, what all the things are of text options that you have in Procreate Dreams. So what can we actually do with animating this type so that we get a kind of cool little motion graphics presentation here? So we're looking at the word watts and I've just turned off the other layers for now. Watts, here's my zero second mark, my playhead. I'm gonna click here, bring up the action menu. And what we're gonna do is start with a filter that gives it a keyframe, setting the opacity to none. So it's there, but it's not really there. We don't see it. Now, um, I want that what's to just gently fade in. So I'm gonna give it probably, come down. I want it to happen in just about under one second. So here's my one second mark. I'm gonna come back to about here. Put my cursor down, get a playhead there bring up the menu, set another opacity keyframe. It's still at zero right now. We're gonna say, no, you should be fully visible by this point. So now if I flick to zoom out here, we can hit play and what's comes right up like that. I feel like that's a little bit fast actually. So not a problem. Just go to where I set that keyframe and give it maybe another almost a second. And we'll just see if that has a little bit of a smoother, and we've got 10 seconds to deal with here, so plenty of time. Watts, that was a little more soft and not kind of, if you blink, you miss it. So I like that transition. So opacity filters right there. We didn't even have to do a movement, just bringing it in, fading it up softly. All right, so let's bring up the next word, and that's gonna be your. Now I don't want your to be in here until we've got uh, what's all the way settled. So we're going to just adjust the start of that timeline. And what I did on my last one, you can, you can do this however you'd like, but I focused on size and I started out with your being super big off the screen, kind of big like this. And 
it can also do a little opacity shift too. So we're gonna start here. I'll say set the opacity to zero, but it is gonna be a pretty quick transition to where this gets more visible. So I'll come in about 10 frames and give it its 100% and it's going to be moving. So I'm gonna give it about a one and a half second transition. That would be right, mm, we're gonna just play with this. Right around here, I'm gonna put in move and scale. And you don't wanna use performance mode for this because you want your text to be a little more structured in the way that it moves, or, or maybe you don't. I guess you could use performance mode, but I, for this one, am going to make sure I just keyframe it. So I set my, my keyframe position there, and this is gonna zoom right in and land. What's your? Now, if I don't like where it's landing and I kinda don't, it's too tight, I still, I can go ahead and shift this around. All these movements that I'm doing now, if I was doing them in performance, it would be terrible. You'd see all of it. Everything I'm doing would be keyframed. Because I'm setting a manual keyframe, I can mess around until I get this exactly where I want it to land, which is right there. What's your? So for my word dream, I have it in position where I want it to land and that's going to be fine. So if that's where I want it to land, I'm going to think ahead. I'm going to go down my timeline to about four seconds, maybe four and a half. So this is about where all the text will finish up. Click on the playhead, click move and scale and keyframe. I'm not actually moving or scaling it. I'm just setting that keyframe. So that's my hold. That's, that's where I want it to end up. But now if I kind of backtrack, I have another keyframe here. Not sure what this one is. I'm gonna delete that. Um, this keyframe is going to be where I make this teeny tiny, almost invisible, microscopic. No one's gonna really see that. So now, as we kind of replay the whole sequence, There we go. We have three different ways of having these pieces of typography appear. One last kind of nice, fun effect that I want to do is I'm going to take this dream layer, hold it, copy it. On the track above, I've already added a new track. I'm going to paste it. Hold, paste. And I've got to make sure that they start at the same point. There we go, see that little red vertical line shows me I'm locked into the same exact timing. And this layer that says dream, we're gonna mess around with this one. It's hard to do anything with my microscopic ant size type, right? So I'm just gonna go down the timeline to where I can see what I'm doing. Select my type, I'm actually gonna go change the color of it. It's gonna be kind of a cool purple, kind of light though, light and bright. And we're going to give it a filtering with a blur, some Gaussian blur. So it's going to be kind of like a little, little dreamy kind of color over that. All right. Now, like I said, it's not where I want this to be. So we're gonna click here, select all of these and group them. Now, we've got the whole animation, lovely, but I can easily just grab the whole thing as a group. I, oh, click out of this, sorry. Grab the whole thing as a group and now place it a little bit higher on the screen. 
click off of it. Four finger tap is gonna bring us full screen. And that's how the composition is centered now. Take us back out. The three fingers I brought up the controls. I can rewind and play. 